Okay, guys, this is part two. Um, I don't know how many parts are going to be, but um, this is exciting stuff. It's so exciting. It was exciting last year when I covered it. I believe it was last year. In, in regards to Hanukkah, because like I said in part one, another name for Hanukkah is the Feast of Dedication, which is mentioned in John chapter 10. I think it's 1022. And... Even though it says that it's winter, it's because it's referring to the Hanukkah period, which, um, according to Israel's seasons, it is winter during Hanukkah. However, Hanukkah being an eight-day feast, I covered this, uh, if, I'll try to remember to make a playlist and link it. If I don't, then I believe it's titled The Feast of Dedication. And it's many parts as well. <laughs> but it shows that the eight day feast of Hanukkah is tied to this period that we're showing. I don't remember everything that I covered in there, but I know that my image that I showed the, in the mist image is in there. Um, and the, the Tishri 8 is important because that is the, it is my understanding and everything that scripture shows that um, Yeshua would have been born on Feast of Trumpets. Now, last year I thought it was Feast of Tabernacles, but um, Feast of Trumpets makes more sense. Now, I'm not speaking of... Um, see, it's because someone left a comment saying that you know the, the, the lambs in Israel um, are born in the springtime, therefore Yeshua had to be born in the springtime, to become the sacrificial lamb. Well, we know that he's not, he wasn't actually a lamb. He was a man. And we know that the first month mirrors the seventh month. So he could have very well been actually born as a man on the first day of the seventh month. But on the first day of the first month, the mirror image of the, um, him being the sacrificial lamb would be coinciding with the time that the true lambs, the animals, were born. So, and the reason I say about the Feast of Trumpets is because Tishri 8 is such an important date in Scripture, especially with what I'm getting ready to show you in, in the First Kings chapter 8 thing. And it's tied to the Feast of Dedication, which when Yeshua was presented at the temple, on the eighth day, the day that he would was supposed to be brought for circumcision, that is the day that Penuel, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting, keep saying him because of Anna, that Simeon dedicated him to the Lord by raising him up and giving thanks to the Lord for uh, him being able to see him before he died. And, um, you know, of course, everything was symbolic. He, you know, he was God in the flesh. He didn't need to be dedicated or consecrated to the Father because he was the Father come in the flesh. However, symbolically, that's what they did. Um, you know, at, when the baby is circumcised, he's dedicated to the Lord. Um, in the Hebrew culture, anyway. <laughs> Don't think to do that much these days. So, anyway... Everything symbolic. So when Yeshua was circumcised on the eighth day, he was dedicated at the temple. Now, it nowhere does it say that he was that it was the eighth day of Tishri. I am just um, speculating that based on everything that Scripture says and how everything is tied together. Doesn't mean I'm right. So just take it with a grain of salt. Pray about it. There's no need to debate. If you don't agree, that's fine. It's okay. I'm, you know, I'm not saying that I'm right. This is just for your consideration. I'm titling the, these videos, this series, The Dedication of the Bride, because us being the body of Him, we would need to be dedicated as well. Meaning, if we're, if we're being dedicated to Him, you know, ceremonially, symbolically speaking, could this be the day that we are sealed? Because we know that Noah, here's another tie to Noah, that 
Noah and his family were sealed in the ark seven days before the flood came. Or seven days after today, the 8th of Tishri on the Anakian calendar, which is September 22nd. As I'm recording, it is 9.14 p.m. on September 22nd, 2019. Uh, seven days from today, if this is Tishri 8 on the Anakian calendar that I'm observing, then that would be the Feast of Tabernacles or the 15th. That is the day that I really, um, that day and then seven days after that, or October 6th. So seven days from today, the 29th would be the 15th or the first day of Tabernacles, high watch period because of the in the mist image thing that I'm going to talk about. And then seven days after the 29th, October 6th, which is the same as the eighth day of tabernacles on the Anakian calendar. Okay, so were we sealed today? Or is the sealing going to come a week from today? I don't know. These are just the time frames we're looking at. But anyway, uh, so I want to pull up the de definition of dedication. So you see all these uh, synonyms are definitely, uh, could you know, the bride. This is her. And she has, she has basically pledged herself to her king. She's committed herself. She's devoted herself. So, um, this is definitely, you know, a definition, but it's also, um, you know, here this is a dedication and unveiling, which that's what happens at a wedding. You know, you dedicate yourself to your, your beloved and then the bride is unveiled so she can kiss her new husband. Um, consecration, sanctification, hallowing and benediction. This is what happened when Yeshua was, uh, exalted by Simeon. So as you see, everything is tight together between uh, the eighth day, whatever day the eighth day is, whether it's today, Tishri 8, or the 22nd of Tishri, not September, but the 22nd of Tishri, which is October 6th on the Gregorian, because that's the eighth day of Tabernacles. Either way, this is going to be happening. <laughs> We pray, we pray that it's this time frame, this year. And guys, th this world is falling apart. Oh my goodness, I I'll tell you in the end. I don't want to interrupt our series, but something on our local news today is just, just unbelievable. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, continuing on. So let's look at, well, let's read chapter 8 verses 1 through 4 of Revelation first. So then when I go to read the long chapter of First Kings chapter 8, you'll see the comparison there. Okay. So before I go to chapter 8, I wanted to just show you the pause that comes before the seventh seal opening, which is in those verses in chapter 8. It's talking about that. So in Revelation 6, we have the first six seals being opened. And then you would think that, well, okay, well, next should come the seventh seal. Well, as you read on, going to chapter 7, it uh, doesn't say anything about the seventh seal yet. It starts talking about God's people being preserved. This is where the 144,000 are sealed. So keep that in mind. The pause happens. 144,000 are sealed. Um, which I believe, if if you've seen my teaching on who I believe the 144,000 are, that the bride is definitely, if not all of the bride, select members of the bride are the 144,000. And if you're, you have to look at this with spiritual eyes, not in the carnal. Um, please, please don't debate me on this, because I explain my point of view in the teaching that I have on 144,000. If you disagree and you think they're just Jews from the tribes of Israel, then okay. 
I, I don't have time in this video to explain that we are all the children of Israel. Scripture backs that up. And we are all of the tribes. It's all symbolic. It just has nothing to do with your physical DNA. Although I would be safe probably in saying that the bride of Christ, I'm sure, has Hebrew DNA. I'm, as a matter of fact, we all do. <laughs> because um, unless you're of the serpent seed, we're all sons of Abraham. Abraham, and we're all descendants of Noah. So, you know, unless you think you're from, from another planet, then okay. But anyway, um, and then it talks about the praise of the great multitudes. So here's another example of the pause that comes before, right before the seventh seal is open. And then it goes on in chapter eight to talk about the seventh seal being open. So that stuff happened. Now it is it's clear, especially if you believe that the Revelation twelve sign happened two years ago, tomorrow on the twenty third. If you believe that, and you know, I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but if it if it was in fact true and it did happen, then we know that the book of Revelation is not chronological, that things don't happen in the sequence as you read them. Some of the things could, but some things happen out of the order that we read them in. And if you have read any of the apocryphal books, and I'm not saying that all books that are outside of the Bible are um, sound doctrine, but I believe that some are. And um, I have not 100% vetted this website, so... I'm, you know, just you use discernment, ask the Holy Spirit if something on the site seems to be out of touch. But, uh, I do believe, you know, Second Baruch is, um, part of the apocryphal books. Uh, Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe, but he was also a prophet. He also re received revelations as well as writing things down for Jeremiah. So, in Second Baruch, chapter 26, he's talking to the angel who is uh, revealing things to him, or to the Lord himself. Well, the angel of the Lord, then Yeshua. And he he's asking about the tribulation period. And he says, the apocalypse of the twelve... Uh, well, this is this is the title of it. And he and Baruch says, and I answered and said... Now let's see what, what the angel says to him beforehand. Okay, verse 4 says... Well, let's read all four verses. Sorry. Um, and Yahweh answered and said to me, You also will be preserved until that time, namely until that sign which Yahweh the Most High will bring about before the inhabitants of the earth at the end of days. This then will be the sign when horror seizes the inhabitants of earth, and they fall into many tribulations, and further they fall into great torments, or the great tribulation. And it will happen that they will say in that and their thoughts because of their great tribulations, Yahweh the Mighty One does not any more remember the earth. It will happen when they lose hope that the time will awake. So they, in other words, a tribulation will begin when people realize that, you know, things are, are not going back to the way they used to be. It's going to take great judgment for them to wake up. And then Baruch says to him, and I answered and said, That tribulation which will be, which will be, will it last a long time? And that distress will it embrace many years? So he's asking, how long will the tribulation be? And this is the answer that he gets. And Yahweh answered and said to me that the time, that the time will be divided into twelve parts, and each part has been preserved for that for which it was appointed. It's just saying that there's going to be 12 different parts and the seals, the trumpets, and the vile judgments fall within these 12 parts. So, let me finish. In the first part, the beginning of commotions. So, this would be like the beginning of sorrows, which I believe we're in now. The second part, the slaughtering of the great. Um, this could be 
where something happens and, and a lot of people die. The third part, the fall of many into death. See, it, I don't have the, the translation of this, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, how these two would differ. The great, I'm not sure, um, you know, what that, exactly that means. And the fourth part, the drawing of the sword, meaning war. So some people will die one way, I guess, and then this is war. This could be tied to the fourth seal of the rider of, of the red horse. And in the fifth part, famine and the withholding of rain, earthquakes and terrors. Now, see, all of these things are already happening. You know, sometimes people think that, yes, it will be worse during the Great Tribulation, but, you know, the first half of the Tribulation, uh, you know, all these things are going on now. That's all I'm saying. And here's where it's interesting. And and I have a Sefer Bible, and it's this way in my Bible, too. It says the sixth part, earthquakes and, tra- and terrors. And then it goes on to the eighth part. Well, where's the seventh part? You know what I'm saying? So the seventh part is missing out of, out of these twelve parts. So in reality, it's eleven, but... I think the reason this is just speculation that the seventh part is missing is because it's referring to the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, and then ultimately the seventh vial judgment, which are all a pause or a rest period in between. Like, in other words, you know, bad things happen and then there's a pause. And then bad things happen and then there's a pause. So... You know, that's the only thing I can think of is why the seventh part is missing. And then the eighth part, a multitude of ghosts and the appearance of demons. This would be when the pit is open. You know, and as you see, the seventh part is like the in-between time. This stuff is not happening yet. I mean, it is in, you know, smaller doses. But when the Great Tribulation happens, this stuff's going to be a regular thing like it is up here like this stuff. So, this is the pit being opened, the fall of fire, this is like things falling from from space, you know, like um, the a great mountain, uh, flaming as a torch, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the incense, which is in Revelation chapter 8, which I'm getting ready to show you. The, um, the censer, is filled with fire and hurled to the earth. You know, that's this. Rape and much violence. This is when all, you know, chaos and hell is breaking loose. Injustice and unchastity. Disorder and a mixture of all that has been before. So you see is in the twelfth part, which is the last part mentioned, there is a mixture of all that has been before. So in other words, in this part, all this stuff is going to be happening. A mixture. And then here's where it says... Where it tells you that things can happen out of order. These parts of that time will be, pres- will be preserved and will be mixed one with another and they will minister to each other for some of these parts will withhold a part of themselves and take from others and will accomplish that which belongs to them and to others. Hence those that live on the earth in those days will not understand that it, it is the end of times. Um... Like right now. Now, during the Great Tribulation, I'm pretty sure people will understand. But then again, maybe they won't. Because, yeah, maybe they won't. Because the the AC is going to be deceiving people into thinking, you know, well, you know, this didn't happen. Uh, it was this. And, and it's okay, because I'm going to fix everything. Don't worry about it. I mean, like right now, people are deceived, thinking we're not in the end of times. And we know that we are. So, but what these these two last verses, 13 and 14, are saying is that all these parts, which the um, the seals and the trumpets are all part of these parts, you know, 
things that are going to be happening in the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the vile judgments are all in here. In one way or another, they all fit under one of these categories. And this is saying that they're all going to be mixed together, one with another, and they'll minister to, in other words, you know, um, like the sixth seal can be opened at the same time as the third trumpet kind of thing. I'm just, that's an example. I'm not saying that's how it will happen, but as an example, that they don't, in other words, they don't have to happen chronologically in order. Like all the seals are open, then all the trumpets are done, and then all the vials are done. So, the reason I'm telling you that is because in Revelation chapter 8, this of course is talking about the seventh seal. So, in our mind, we're thinking chronologically because we think linear as far as time, and time is not linear in the spiritual realm. It's cyclical or circular, which is why I was led to make the Anakian the wheel calendar. You know, that's why a clock is circular in motion and it's not a line on a wall that says, you know, 1 through 12. It's, it's not linear. So, normal thinking, we're thinking that, you know, the, the seven seals have been be open and then the seven trumpets and then the seven vials. Well, as I just showed you in Second Baruch, it's saying that it won't have to happen that way because I'm thinking because of this tie to First Kings chapter 8, which we'll get into in the next video, that this the seventh seal could be opened at the time of the rapture and then other seals are opened. You know, like war and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and read this real quick and then I'm going to cut this off and we'll get into First Kings chapter 8 and the next one. Okay, so this is the seventh seal. Now, as we just saw from reading um, Revelation chapter 6, and then there's a pause. Things happen before this period. Now, as you just saw in Second Baruch, that some things can happen in, in order, and then they start going in different orders. Now, that doesn't mean... When I'm talking about things happening out of order, it doesn't mean chaos. <laughs> because the Lord is in control and He can do things in any order He wants. So, if He's, if He is saying, I want this to happen and, and then this to happen over here, even though the humans think, <laughs> my children think that that's not how it's going to happen, that's how I want it to happen. If he says that's how he wants it to happen, then it's not chaos. It is order in his eyes. So don't confuse the two. You know, I can just see the comment now. God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of order. And you're saying things are going to happen out of order. And that, so no, that's, please, that's not what I'm, that's not the meaning in regards to order that I'm talking about. Things happening in, in a certain, sequence and things happening in a chaotic order are not the same thing. Okay. Okay, so let's read this. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And as I said, this space of half an hour could refer to a six-month period. I don't know that. I'm just saying, or it just could refer to a pause. Um, you know, I don't know. But like I said, half in scripture, half a time times and half a time. The half a time is referring to six months because it's half of a year. And then the time could re, um, uh, the time means a year in scripture, but of course time also could mean an hour. So this could re be referring to half of a year or six months. Okay, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So, um, you know, are these the seven angels of the seven churches that are getting ready to blow their trumpets because they're, they're getting ready to call each of the churches? I don't know. Just speculation. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there... Now, who is the one that had the golden censer? 
usually the high priest. So it says another angel. This could be referring to Yeshua. And you'll see what I'm saying, how it ties into First Kings chapter 8. Having a golden censer, there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which is, was before the throne. So we just remember these details. Um, the, this angel comes with the golden censer, and the high priest is, you know, the one that had the golden censer. I mean, more than all the priests could carry a censer, but this is just speaking of one particular. And he has the prayers of the saints in the censer. Well, you know, we know that Yeshua intercedes. So, in other words, he hears our prayers and then he tells Father. He intercedes for us. He's the mediator between us and the Father. Um, now, the veil is torn as of his crucifixion, so it's not like we have to go through him to reach the Father because he and the Father are one. So when we're speaking to him, we're speaking to the Father. And then he can intercede for us, just like he did when he was on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them. And he prayed to the Father on behalf of us. So this angel is offering the prayers of the saints upon the golden offer, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came up with the prayers of the saints, of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it onto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So as soon as he cast that censer with the fire f from the altar, there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So this is, this is what happens when the presence of the Most High is making himself known. In other words, he's not just sitting there silent. He's making himself known. And of course, when Yeshua comes through the clouds, that's exactly what will happen. So we will pick up in the next video, getting into First Kings chapter 8, so you can see the ties to the time frame that we're in now and to what we just read here. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you. Shalom.